Justin Meyer, and I'm on the customer success team here at Green Valley International. And one thing we like to do when we get a system in before it heads out to our end customers uh, from our manufacturing facility is actually go through the box and make sure that everything that should be included in the order is there. So I'm just going to take you in this video kind of through what I would be doing uh, prior to sending this thing out in the mail to our end customer, our partner. So what we have here today is we have uh, the brand new DJI M300 RTK system. Uh, this is actually the system that the end customer intends to use the Liar V on. Uh, so everything that you'll see in this box will be basically customized in a sense to integrate cleanly with the DJI uh, MT10, excuse me, M300 RTK system. If you are uh, planning to use like a DJI M210 or even something like the DJI M600, we'll have custom mounting kits for you. And the way that we do this is because uh, systems like this uh, wouldn't have a Skyport adapter on it or even a third party system, obviously wouldn't have a DJI Skyport on it. We basically have uh, the Skyport uh, kind of mount here, uh, excuse me, just the adapter portion that you can use the standard design of the Liar V to lock into. So this will be another video. I'll show you how to actually mount this to the M600, but let's stay focused here today on the M300 RTK kit, which is what we have here in front of us. So I'll open up the box, and uh, the first thing you'll notice is that there's a little plastic bag uh, with some papers in it. These papers um, are gonna contain some kind of key things for you to go through uh, when you first receive the system and this is going to include a components list, right? So not only will it have the name of the components, uh, how many the quantity is and maybe any special notes, we also have the GBI part number if you ever need to order a replacement. So this is a good thing to hold on to, scan, uh, so you always have a copy of it on your records, um, but also use it as a guide when you're doing your initial unpacking to make sure everything that should be in the box is in the box. And that's what I'll do uh, uh, in most of this video is I'll go down this list. Other key pieces of paper to probably scan, keep for your records, are gonna be the Liar Factory Acceptance uh, Test Report. This is all QA, QC work that's done before the system leaves the manufacturing facility uh, to basically show that it left in working condition. Uh, we also have these nice quick start guides that are gonna show you very clearly uh, with pictures how to set up the Lie in Bear V antenna mounting kits on top of the device, uh, how to actually uh, install the Skyport mount into the Skyport uh, adapter that's on the DJI system. Um, so these are gonna be nice and easy for you to follow. Once you've got actually gone through your box before you uh, use the system, we ask that you um, either choose to accept it uh, or if you identify any issues, please indicate what those are before signing the form uh, and sending it back to us. Obviously, if there's any system issues, you know, maybe something happened in transport or something's missing, before you use the system, please contact uh, your Green Valley sales rep uh, or your uh, customer service rep to actually report the issue and we can give you guidance on what to do from there. Um, so those are all what you're gonna see in terms of the paperwork. And now I'll go down the list um, like you should do when you first receive the system and take you through one by one what each one of these items are. So the first thing you'll see is the LiDAR system. And that's gonna be actually what some would refer to as the payload itself. This is what's going to be mounted to the drone uh, and it has all of the onboard sensors for data collection. So this unit right here, the customer chose to go ahead and have the optional camera integrated into it so it can collect RGB data simultaneously. Uh, really nice for making colorized point clouds or uh, photogrammetry products uh, from the same flight data that you collected your LiDAR from. So you see here, this is the actual LiDAR sensor. Here we have the LiveOx Mid-40 sensor. Um, and then what you can't see in here, but it contains is the pose system, as well as the um, control and storage boards for the device. So. This is the actual Skyport adapter. So what you'll see are some pins on there and it actually pulls power directly from the Skyport. If you're using, for example, this mounting kit where you can't pull power directly from, what you have here is on the front is another power spot and you basically will get a Lemo cable that can go to an XT30 connector type uh, to pull power either from the bottom of the M600 directly or the backside of the DJI M210 or some third-party power source. Um, 
you're using a third party, do consult with the Green Valley technical support. Make sure that you're within the uh, capabilities of the system. So that will be the actual LiDAR system there. So we'll place that back clearly into the box. Um, oh, one more thing I should point out here, won't be on the list, but there's a little door here. You lift that up and there's an SD card and that's actually where you're gonna be pulling the camera images from. Uh, kind of a good best practice to keep in mind is that the onboard storage of the LiRV unit that stores the uh, IMU data, the GNSS in data, as well as the laser scan data, that's going to probably fill up slower than the SD card on the camera. So have multiple SD cards formatted correctly when you get out to the field or to make your life even easier, just after every mission, pull the SD card, copy the images, name them in a folder correctly. Uh, big thing is, is you do clear, create, clear up space. Uh, do not delete the root files, uh, root folder files that are on here, just the contents of the DCIM folder. Uh, if you delete the root contents, uh, the camera will have issues during data collection. It's not the end of the world. We can always send you a file to reformat the SD card, but uh, it is going to create problems in the field for you if you do delete those files uh, from the SD card. So I'm going to place that back in the box here. And the next item on our list is going to be the network cable. So this network cable is, uh, is really serves as two functions. Uh, on, on board here, there is a control device that actually has some firmware saved to it. That it's called LiAcquire Web, and that's going to be essentially what you're able to connect to through a browser um, and this Ethernet connection here to the LAN port that's on the front side interface of this. And that's where you're going to set control parameters like what height you want to start recording at. You can also upgrade the calibration file that's specific for your system uh, to the unit itself. You can update the firmware. There's a variety of things you can do uh, with, with that. Um, and the other function of this is to actually pull the data at the end of the flight uh, and transfer it onto the computer that will be running the Lie Geo reference software, which you will actually use to process the GNSS data differentially uh, and create your final pose or trajectory file uh, and then create a geo referenced uh, point cloud. So that's a whole nother part of the workflow, but this is a key part is actually getting the data off the system. So that's called the network cable. The next thing you'll find in here on our list is going to be a GNSS antenna. So those antennas are going to be, there's two of them actually. So the way that the GNSS board is in the LiRV, it's a dual import, a dual input uh, um, design. So you'll basically have GNSS1, GNSS2. Little memory device for you is, a, if, uh, is that you should always have to have two in the front, one in the back. Uh, and if you forget that, there's on print, the way it's printed on the actual interface, you'll see that GNSS2 is on the front side of the device and one is on the back. So when you put these antennas on top of the M300, you just got to make sure that you run the feeder cables down to the unit as it's connected underneath here, that you have essentially the one that's in the front is GNSS2 running to the correct port on the side here, and the one in the back is GNSS1. Uh, running to the correct port here. This is GNSS1 on it. Uh, again, these, it doesn't matter uh, if you swap these. Uh, it just matters what the connectors are. Um, and we have all this clearly explain, explained in the setup guides that you'll be receiving with the unit. So to actually mount those to the top, there is going to be a mounting bracket. A little hard to see here, but uh, this essentially has got all the hardware you're going to need to uh, screw this in up top and then mount your uh, GNSS antennas on it, those little round ones. Uh, basically will sit like this and a lot of customers will leave this on there, uh, especially if they're using the drone a lot. So this doesn't necessarily, be need, doesn't necessarily need to be installed every time, uh, but it really depends how you transport and store the device and what other work you're doing with it. Um, one thing you'll need to do, though, is you'll actually need to use the tool set that's going to come with it uh, to actually screw this into the top of the system. This is a, just some standard hex wrenches that actually are the same set of tools that will make it very easy to mount uh, the mounting kit to something like the M600. Uh, so this is a good thing to have. You'll see in the box here we have like pre-cut grooves, so everything has its place and can be kept nice and orderly. So 
The next thing that we're going to have here is the actual mounting kit. So uh, again, this is the system that's for the Skyport on the M300 RTK. So the mounting kit here is actually built right into the design. Uh, so this is all good to go here and that will uh, connect directly to here and you'll see there's going to be some red dots that align on that once it's secured in place. The next thing that you're going to want to look at here is the base station, right? So like the camera, this is optional. Uh, a lot of customers already have a GNSS serving base station that they can pull a Rhinex file from and that's what you need to actually do the differential correction on the GNSS data that's going to be collected by the LIRV itself. Um, but you can also opt to use the GVI uh, base station and what that's going to come with here is the antenna itself. So this is going to be the uh, standard uh, base that comes with it. If you look underneath there's a port here and that's going to actually take the antenna feeder cable and it's going to connect it to the base station box here. So this is going to have the receiver board in it and the data logger as a light indicator display here to allow you know when you've got the satellite fix and also when you're recording data. Really simple operate. Just press the save button once to start logging, press it again to stop. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's an antenna feeder cable here and that's going to actually connect from here on the device where there's a little cover on this right now uh, to the port that's located right here. So in order to power this base station, you're going to need uh, the power cable and you're going to need a DJI Mavic 2 battery. Um, so that's it's essentially what we have uh, the power interface port look like on this. So that's important you pick up a DJI Mavic 2 battery if you're using the GNSS base station from GVI. Uh, otherwise you won't be able to power it and it's critical to have that base station file uh, if you want to produce an accurate and precise point cloud. Uh, Can you explain why we don't include batteries? Uh, the reason that we don't include batteries and customers often ask this is uh, simply because of uh, import export controls on the device, uh, uh, excuse me, lithium ion devices. So, but the reason we chose to use DJI is there's m online stores, many enterprise dealers around the world, so they're actually quite easier to find and quite safe. Um, they can also travel on airplanes, um, so it's easy if you have to do international work with your device. So uh, let's keep going through the box here. Uh, in terms of the base station, you see there's a data cable. This is just uh, USB, excuse me, uh, USB to USB here. And this is going to essentially plug directly into the USB port here, the other onto your computer. It's going to be uh, running Legio Reference or at least storing your LIRV project data that you've pulled using the Ethernet connector. Um, but anyways, you're just going to pull the base station file off of your project and put it in that project folder. Um, one thing to note is that during that process you won't need to be plugged into the Mavic 2 battery. It actually will pull power from the computer directly. So in that sense it's just a data logger uh, as well. So that explains almost everything that's uh, for the base station. Something that we also include is a little adapter. So this is not very much clearance on here. So the best practice with these antennas is to get them up on a tripod, get them up off the ground, uh, so you have better vis visibility of the satellites in the sky, can make sure you're not near any sources of electromagnetic radiation or tall buildings or trees or you could have multi-path effects. Um, and you'll want to collect the measurement uh, when you have this set up on a tripod from whatever the reference point is on the ground that's known in uh, WGS84 latitude and longitude. Uh, as well as WGSA 84 ellipsoidal heights. And you'll want to know the, basically the height from that point on the ground to the L1 phase center. So if you forget where the L1 phase center is, there's a nice diagram here on the bottom that will help you figure out exactly where you need to measure to to get what we call the antenna height value. So that's important to collect in the field each time uh, you set this up, especially when it's not on this mounting kit, which obviously will keep it at a fixed height. Um, important to keep this level too, so you don't have any angular error. Uh, that's another reason why having a surveyor tripod is, is very uh, much recommended. So I'm going to place this back in the box and that's, that's everything we need to know about the base station. Um, and I'll take another look here just to make sure that we've gone through everything. Oh, there's also a USB stick here. 
Uh, so this is, uh, there's two. There's one that's actually on there for just, uh, it's going to come with all the files that are specific for your system, um, including the dev files, or excuse me, the calibration files, the user manuals, uh, the software installers for the versions that you've purchased. Good idea is to actually take everything that's on that USB stick and copy it somewhere uh, for your records and <laughs> label it with the system serial number. So down the road, if you lose a file or, or something needs to be done, it's easy to remember what came with your system uh, right away. I also see there's an SD card reader and that's gonna be for actually when you're pulling the images off the camera and saving them into your um, <coughs> LiRV project file folder. So that's everything that you're going to see in the box. I think the one thing I didn't, I missed out of order here, but kind of take you back are these GNSS feeder cables. I know I've said this a few times, but these are just going to connect your GNSS uh, 2 and GNSS 1 uh, antennas to the side of the actual LiRV device uh, when it's mounted to the drone itself. So that's everything that you're going to expect to see in the box. If you order a Liar V unit uh, that's going to be used with the DJI uh, Matrice 300 RTK system, uh, there'll be some variability in this depending on what the actual order is. For example, if you chose to have the camera or not, the base station or not, um, as well as what you've indicated uh, the, the actual UAV system you'll be mounting it to. So do spend some time talking to your sales rep uh, or our GVI distributor and really make sure that uh, you understand what exactly the intended use or I should say the intended vehicle is for mounting the Liar V2 so we can make sure that we have everything in the box that you're going to need to be uh, up and running right away. Uh, so everything is here that I expect to be here so I'm going to wrap this up and uh, get it in the mail and get it over to our end customer.